children said amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Russell, for that reminder. I think all of us as clergy, every now and then, need a refresher. That was as good as it gets. Thank you so much. I want to give the charge to the church. I'd love for at this time all of Canaan that can stand, if you would yes, please stand. Amen. 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 Pastor Hillian shared during his sermon very profoundly that you have a watchman. He's going to be praying for you. I want to charge you, church, to reciprocate that gesture. My words are futile. The Apostle Paul says in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 25, pray for us. And that's P-R-A-Y. Pray for us. All right, I got you. Don't pray on us. Pray for us. Each opportunity you get, call my name before our God. Because the pilot of the plane has a whole lot to deal with. Every time I get on the plane, I tell the pilot, I'm praying for you. Because my job on the plane is just to go sit down, put my seatbelt on, get a drink of water, some juice. Peanuts, depending on what carrier it is. That's the, that's the end of my job. But the pilot has to stay connected with the watch time. When he gets close to home, he can't just land on his own. He got to wait till he gets clearance. Because there'll be a catastrophe on the launching and landing back. Pray for your pastor. Pray for him. Then the second thing that I want to share with you to do is participate. Ephesians 4 11 says, and he will give you apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. They got a job to do to equip you to do the work of the ministry. I think I can speak for a lot of pastors. One of the major challenges of our job is to have to reteach what we just finished teaching to somebody who wasn't there and should have been there and could have been there. Church, participate. Whatever your hands find to do in the ministry, do it. Tell the congregation that I'm pastor, even if your job is to be a part of the smile ministry. Brush your 32 or however many you got left. Come on in this house and get your smile on. Participate. Pray. P-R-A-Y. Participate. But then, Many of us are familiar with Galatians 6 and 7. It says, Be not deceived, God is not mocked, whatsoever man is sore, that shall be also reap. We think that is when you do wrong, wrong coming back. But in proper context, you've got to go back to verse 6. Verse 6 says, He that is taught the word of God shall share all good things with his instructor. Now, verse 7, be not deceived, God is not mocked, whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. 8, for he that sows to please his flesh, shall of his flesh reap corruption, but he that sows to please the spirit, shall of the spirit reap eternal life. 
Therefore, as we have opportunity, all right, let us do good all right. to all. Yes. Especially those of the household of faith. Yes. Last time you went to the doctor's office, you weren't concerned about where he stayed. Last time you went to the doctor's office, you weren't concerned about what he's role. You were there because you needed a service rendered by him. Perhaps you didn't even look on the wall to see if he was degreed or not. They just told you to take off your clothes, and you did. And I don't understand why it is when we get to the house of God, we won't worry about what he drives, what he neighborhood he lives in, what kind of clothes he has. Truth be told, his job is greater than even any doctor you know. Because every Sunday he got to perform heart surgery on you. You don't want a person performing surgery on your heart worried about a light bill or a gas bill or a telephone bill. Can you? And when you saw, you shall read. Amen.